Today, as the first Sunday in the season of Christmas, um, we don't get very many Christmas Sundays, but we get a couple. Uh, and it is traditionally the Sunday that we do a service of lessons and carols. And um, so that's the reading of the sort of the whole story of Christianity or Christmas from the prophets on through um, the birth of Jesus and then a little bit beyond. And the readings, um, so, so it's just lots of readings and, and hymnody music. Um, the choir and instrumentalists have done such an amazing job. They have worked so hard over the course of this whole month, but to have a service like this with so many hymns in it, they have just been recording like crazy and mixing like crazy. Betty's been up for hours. <laughs> so a hearty thank you to all of you before we appreciate this music um, because it's just fabulous. Also just a word about the service. Normally there would not be a sermon on the Sunday of Lessons and Carols, but um, our interim bishop decided to do everybody a favor and issue a sermon of his own that he recorded um, for this Sunday. So we will be having a sermon, but it will be our interim bishop, Murray Fink, um, that's preaching today. Let's uh, just take a moment and center ourselves for worship and receive the beginning of many pieces of glorious music. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also, with, also you. with you.
People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light, the light shines, shines in the darkness, and the, the darkness, darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have we now beheld Christ's glory, 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 glory as the first child of the maker. maker. To us a child is born. To us, a son is given. In Jesus, Jesus was life, 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 and the life, and the life, life is the life, life, life of all, all people. Let us pray. Wondrous God, you have filled us with the new light of the word who became flesh and lived among us. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O oh God, and open our minds to a deeper awareness of your living word. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our infant Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish 
and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second reading is from the fifth chapter of Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, we will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. Present in papers we see 
Our Jesus is with us and ever sets us free. Our third reading is from the first chapter of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Our fourth reading is from the second chapter of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Our fifth reading is from the second chapter of Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Lord of all, Fox 
were sleeping, shepherds keeping vigil till the morning noon. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of the gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, presence voicing, greet the morrow. Christ the child was born for you. Christ the child was born for you. The Holy Gospel for the first Sunday after Christmas is recorded in Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 21. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is statute in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. Thank you for the invitation to be part of your worship service this Sunday morning on this last Sunday of the year 2020. I hope all who are worshiping with us today are well and safe, and I hope you will remain secure and protected in these days ahead as we find ourselves here in Southern California in what some are calling the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic at this time. In the midst of that ominous news, it is good to be with you this morning as we, people of faith, look for good news in the midst of all that we're facing. There are many different thoughts running through my heart and head these days that shape what I would like to say this particular Sunday morning. In the midst of the grim news regarding the global health crisis and our sheltering in place guidelines, people of faith are still able to find signs of hope. Just a few days ago, on the day of the winter solstice, when the shadows of night lingered longer and the daylight hours grew dimmer earlier, 
As we looked to the skies that night, we saw the conjunction of the two planets, reminding us of the story of the Star of Epiphany 2,000 years ago. Students of astronomy tell us that the last time these two planets made that light in the way that they made it this year was the year 1226. And now we have to wait 60 more years for that phenomenon to happen again when these two planets will cross paths. But what a wonderful sign of hope that was for us on the longest night of the year and at a time when some are calling it the longest year that they have ever lived. For my own family on that day, our fourth grandson was born, a little boy, healthy and well, and also along, thanks be to God, his mother and older brother and our son are also doing quite well. So we've been sheltering at home, away from extended family, in this, the longest nights of the year, and yet new life comes in the midst of it, and giving us hope in these challenging times and days. Of course, there is a much similar and a far greater story, the one we just celebrated, with millions of other Christians around the world. The birth of an infant born in Bethlehem 20 centuries ago. And that birth, of course, was the incarnation of God, who out of deep love and compassion for us all had come to be among us, come to be one of us. The angels called him the Messiah, the Lord, and he was the savior and redeemer of the world. Just 33 years after his birth, he would give his life on a cross, only seven miles from where he was born, fulfilling that calling that first brought him to Bethlehem. Now it is three days since we celebrated God's greatest gift to the world. On this first Sunday following Christmas Day, we gather again for what often is called Holy Family Sunday. The texts are those that follow the nativity narrative as St. Luke continues to tell us about the first days in the life and early years of Jesus. We know so very little about Jesus' first 30 years. We know that most familiar Christmas story, of course, about his birth in Bethlehem, along with a few other details of angels and shepherds. We are told, as was the common practice as the story goes on, the common practice for the people of the Jewish faith, that on the eighth day after the baby was born, that baby boys underwent the rite of circumcision, thus entering into that covenantal relationship with God, a practice that had begun during the time of Abraham, nearly 2,000 years before. The baby was named Jesus that day. Then St. Luke tells us what happened 33 days following the birth of a firstborn son to a Jewish family. Mary and Joseph took their child to the temple in Jerusalem to make a sacrifice and to present their baby to the Lord God. The biblical writings of Exodus and Leviticus say that the firstborn boys were to be made holy, which means set apart, and they were dedicated or presented to God. So faithful Jewish parents did exactly what Mary and Joseph were now doing. They brought their baby along with a modest sacrificial offering to the temple to dedicate their firstborn son to the Lord God. What must have been beyond their comprehension then, and probably is still beyond our understanding today, was that as they brought that baby, to be dedicated to God that day. They were actually holding God in their own arms. And God in Jesus was dedicating himself to us as he entered our humanity so that he could be our sacrifice, that we might be forgiven and made right with God. It was the only way we would be able to claim the promises and the love of God. This year, as I read and reread Luke chapter 2, it occurred to me how different Christmas would be around the world and, of course, in our own settings, if Luke, who probably never met Jesus, had not told us the story that he wrote in the second chapter of his gospel. 
Those 52 verses tell us about some of the details of the most wondrous moment in all of human history, in all of creation. It's a story that would change our lives forever. Just think of Christmas without a decree from Caesar Augustus, without a faithful man and his engaged fiance making that arduous journey to Bethlehem as Mary was ready to give birth. Just think if we did not know about a village with no rooms in the inn. Imagine if Luke had not told us about some kind of a cave or a shelter for the animals with a manger of straw wherein a tiny newborn lay wrapped in swaddling clothes. Without Luke, we would not have known about those angels in the skies over the hills of Bethlehem and the shepherds making haste to see this thing that had come to pass. Without the second chapter of Luke, we would not know how Mary and Joseph fulfilled the rites of the ancient laws and traditions, and they took Jesus for his circumcision and for his naming and his presentation to the temple. We would have never met Simeon and Anna in the midst of their prophetic and prayerful meetings with the Holy Family, and we would not have Simeon's song, which we still sing today. The stories of Luke chapter 2 are stories rich and filled with the promises of God, promises that were fulfilled by God, one of God's greatest gifts to us and to all humanity. Speaking for God, the ancient prophets had long foretold that a Messiah would be raised up for God's people. Hundreds of years before they even named the city, <clears throat> they, they named the city where he was born. God's promises were being fulfilled. Luke 2 tells us about other heavenly promises. God had found favor with a young maiden named Mary, who was promised by an angel that she would bear a child who would become the Lord of God's people forever. Joseph was also promised Given the assurance in a dream that all would be well as he faced the uncertainty of what it really meant that the woman who had promised him herself to him and he to her was now with child, not of his own DNA. Both Mary and Joseph were told the name that they were to give this baby and they faithfully heeded those angelic words. Three weeks later, they met Simeon, who had been promised by the Holy Spirit that he would live long enough to see the long-awaited Messiah and Savior of the world. On that same day, the Holy Family met Anna, who had lost her husband at an early age and remained a widow for 84 years, living in the promises of God's love and care as she came to the temple night and day, praying and giving praise and placing her life into the hands of God. This story is filled with promises, assurances, and the message that God is intimately engaged with God's people, loving us, caring for us, assuring us, making lasting covenants with us, saving us. We are forever grateful for Luke, who told this story. And so much more, we are eternally grateful and thankful to God for joining us in our humanity, promising to love us, forgive us, die and rise for us, and be with us forever. I want to close with a few words about one of the characters in the first pages of Luke's book, who often is not lifted up during the Christmas season. We do not know very much about Joseph. He is only mentioned or referenced a few times, and then he disappears from the narratives about the life of Jesus, sometime between the time when Jesus was 12 years old and when he began his earthly ministry at age 30. We do not hear Joseph's voice. St. Luke and St. Matthew tell us about a listener and a protector during a chaotic time. Joseph was a faithful man who listened to his dreams. He listened to his heart. He listened to God. 
Joseph found great favor in a young woman in the village of Nazareth. He was in love. They were betrothed, engaged, planning to be married. Joseph had found something uniquely wonderful in her, and so did God. God had chosen the days of Joseph and Mary to enter our humanity and to be born among us. Mary had found favor with God, who sent the angel Gabriel to tell her how she had especially been chosen by God. She was told that the Spirit of God would overshadow her, and Mary conceived. Rather than expose his beloved to public disgrace and dismiss her, as Joseph surely could have done after learning that she was with child and it was not of him, Joseph heeded the voice of the angel who invited him to still take his intended to be his wife. Joseph, who listened to the voice of God, now also became the protector of his wife and then also of his about-to-be-born child. The child that was his, and yet the child, of course, was the Son of God. He guarded Mary's reputation, and he took her as his own. Following the voice of the emperor who had called for a census counting, Joseph safeguarded Mary on a 90-mile journey during her final month of pregnancy. When they arrived in his ancestral town, Joseph found her a meager shelter rather than none at all where she could give birth. Then Mary and Joseph followed the traditions in today's gospel reading, the traditions of their faith with their new baby boy. And later, according to the Gospel of Matthew, when a cruel despot king in a jealous, narcissistic rage tried to destroy the infant Jesus, Joseph again listened to the angel of the Lord. And protecting his family, he fled the land to distance his family from this powerful and hateful tyrant. Waiting until Herod was dead, Joseph finally left Egypt and return to his home, always protecting the Holy Family. We only hear one other story about Joseph, who Luke called the child's parent and father. In that story, Joseph again was trying to find and protect Jesus, as the boy at age 12 had disappeared and gone into the temple to listen to the wise people in the temple. And when they found him, he informed them that he was in his father's house. Not only did God find favor with Mary to conceive and give birth to the Son of the Most High, but God chose Joseph to protect the innocent and vulnerable child from the challenges, the difficulties, and the evils of the world at that time. In so doing, God privileged both Mary and Joseph to be needed and necessary components of God's eternal, life-giving, life-saving plan to rescue and redeem us all. I'm going to spend time today and this week thinking about the promises God has made to me, starting in my baptism and then throughout my life and contemplating how God has kept those promises time after time. I will continue to claim those promises during these days as I know that God has vowed to always be near. No matter what kind of day or year it might be, God will be Emmanuel. God is here. God is near. Please claim the promises God made to you this day and join me in contemplation and thanksgiving. Amen. Please join me in our responsive prayer. Glory to God in the highest. And peace, and peace to, God's to God's people on earth. on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all the nations of the world. Bring wisdom, truth, and compassion to birth in all who govern and shape the lives of others. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, Son of Mary, you share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. Bring renewal to all who are incarcerated during this holiday season and their families, and all who are lonely, grieving, or suffering in body, mind, or spirit. May the power of Emmanuel transform our lives and give a new and lasting peace to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Blessed are you, child of the manger. You dwell among us as the word made flesh. Empower, guide, and inspire us to walk in your ways and uphold your truths in our lives. Shine in us, holy child, once again today, that we may bear your healing and hope to all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All that we are and all that we have, all for whom we pray and all who stand in need of prayer, we entrust to you, holy God, for you are Emmanuel, the God who walks with us. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also with you. So with you. Share a word of God's peace to one another. Peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace be, be with, with you, you everyone. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace be with you. As the year comes to the close, this is our last Sunday of 2020. And again, I want to say thank you for the ways that all of you have been so faithful in your giving and support to the congregation and to the ministries of St. Luke. Bless you and may God bless you in the new year as well. Let us pray. Holy God, your beauty shines forth from the manger and your love flows from the cross. As you gather us around these signs of your love, come among us, warm us to extend your care among all the hungry and all in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Our sixth reading is from the second chapter of Luke. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Our seventh reading is from the second chapter of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, 
Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. reading is from the first chapter of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. God, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the one whose faithfulness ever burns. People of God, give thanks to the Lord. We offer our praise and thanksgiving to the one whose love is eternal. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, O God of all, all life creator of heaven and earth. In Jesus Christ, you established your reign of righteousness and peace, giving us partnership in its manifestation and hope for its fulfillment. And so we raise our voices to you with hearts of praise. Holy, 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 holy one, God, God of all that, that is, is, heaven and earth, earth are filled with your glory. glory. 
Madonna is the Son of God and in the, the highest, highest heaven. heaven. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God for it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup. Again, gave thanks to God for it. And then gave it to each one, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We share together in the presence of God, Emmanuel, and we commune one another with these words, the body of Christ given for you. The, the body, body, of, body of Christ, Christ given, given, given for you. you. The cup of salvation given for you. The cup of, the cup of salvation, salvation given, given, given for you. For you. Wise man. 
Please unmute yourself as we share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in Father heaven, in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will, will be done, done, done on, on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread, 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 bread,